For the second straight week, a teenager has a shot at capturing a major championship on the guaranteed rate PBA Tour. 18-year-old Anthony Nyer tries to become the youngest to win one of Pro Bowling's most prestigious events, the U.S. Open, next on FS1. For the first time, Reno and the iconic National Bowling Stadium play host to the U.S. Open. And we've got just a little bit of everything on today's show. It begins with the birthday boy, Christian Ascona, looking to make some Puerto Rican history as he meets one of the hottest on the tour right now, Jason Sterner. 18-year-old Anthony Nyer awaits the winner. Jacob Buttrick looks to end a U.S. Open jinx. And Chris Vai again goes for his first tour title as we welcome you to the 77th edition of the U.S. Open live here on FS1. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson from the house that Ernie McCracken built right here. This has been the highest scoring U.S. Open in decades, and it has played perfectly into the hands of our one seat today, Chris Vai. Yeah, it really has. Welcome back, my friend. It's good to have you. Uh, Chris Vai is probably the hottest bowler on tour in majors, and who could forget his 300 game that he bowled in the Eastern Regional Finals of the Players' Championship, but Rob Red Hot in majors and today he finds himself in the most enviable position of being the number one seed. Our two seed, Jacob Buttruff, a two-time runner-up at the U.S. Open, also a two-time runner-up this season on the tour. Yeah, he's been uh, rededicated and suck. He's been bowling really great this season. His lone major, the 2019 Masters, but let's not forget what he did in 2017 and 2018 when he dominated the U.S. Open only to lose in the title match. Maybe the number two seed bodes better for Jacob and today. He is our only major winner on today's telecast. Youth continues to be served this season on the PBA Tour. Last week at the Masters, it was the 18-year-old Spencer Robarge. This week, another 18-year-old Anthony Nyer, who's got some pretty good bowling DNA. Yeah, he, he really does. I used to bowl with his dad way back in the day on, on tour, uh, back when we used to throw bowling balls that were only one color. And, and his father actually ended up winning a title. Uh, but I think what impressed me most about Anthony last night was the last eight games of match play, he went from eight to three third and I really think that showed what kind of moxie he has. The 18 year old loaded up his pickup truck in Pennsylvania drove all the way here to Reno to try and become the youngest major champion in bowling history. He's standing by with our Kimberly Pressler. Thanks Rob. So Anthony there's been a lot of talk about you being 18 years young making a major telecast and you told us last night that there was a lot of talk of whether or not you can actually handle the pressure but you went from eight to third to secure your spot. You were confident last night but now you're under the bright lights of FS1. How are the nerves? Um, the nerves are I mean I'm pretty well under control. Obviously there's a little bit but I've been here before. I've been on TV. I mean it's not my first time out here. It's a different stage but I'm just going to take it one shot at a time and use my experience on TV. Well, let's talk about the fact that you've been bowling for a really long time. You come from a bowling family. Your dad won a PBA Tour title. Did you used to watch the U.S. Open as a kid? Yeah, I always dreamed of being here. I mean, this is almost a dream come true just to be on the TV show. But the fact that I used to grow up watching all these guys out here, and now it's me, I mean, it's just it's still unbelievable. All right, well, it looks like you're ready for your major debut. Guys? Kimberly, thank you. Uh, we had to verify he was 18 years old yesterday. Randy, we said, show us the driver's license. Yeah. Let's no, see. He's yeah, not no, looking no, teen. You, you asked for his driver's <laughs> truth, license. Truth. Yeah. He doesn't look it and he doesn't act it. Today's four seed is Rochester, New York's Jason Sterner. Flash looks for his fourth tour title and first major of his 16-year pro career. Yeah, Jason Sterner is making back-to-back -back shows, Rob, having finished fourth at last week's Masters. You know how many games he's bowled over the last two weeks? You gave me the number. It was high. Yeah, 99. So since March 29th, he hasn't had a day off. 14 straight days? 14 straight days of bowling, 99 games, and that's just competition, not counting practice. Feels like a lot. That, that's a lot. We begin the 77th U.S. Open. Sterner, your four seed. Right of target. 
came in last night to watch the last eight games of match play, Rob, and I remember looking at you and saying, this is this is re reminding or reminiscent of back when I used to compete in the mid-80s where everybody was throwing non-reactive or urethane bowling balls, all 24 finalists. One of the themes this week at yeah, the yeah. U.S. Open. Sterner cleans that one up. Spare to start this one. Your five seed is the pride of Puerto Rico, 27-year-old Christian Ascona seeking to become the first major champion from the U.S. territory. And the only PBA champion from Puerto Rico, Christian Ascona, actually led one of the rounds here at the 2021 U.S. Open. Qualified second in match play at the 2020 Tournament of Champions, and he was the 2017 South Region Player of the Year. Graduated high school in Puerto Rico, won an international event where he essentially got scouted and recruited, came to the States the next month to bowl at Lindenwood University, and here he is on the PBA Tour. That's how you started, Christian. Happy birthday, number 27 for Christian Ascona, who now lives just outside Orlando in Claremont. As we take a look at today's oil pattern. 42 feet, and, and uh, I mean, this pattern basically told all the players you have to play the extreme outside part of the lane, and the players found a really good home. Remember, there were four different patterns, the last pattern being the one that we used for match play all throughout match play, and it really yielded some high scores, some big scores, and you mentioned it in the open. As Kona's best career finish prior to the season at the U.S. Open, 60th back in 2019 in North Carolina, 60th. Quite a jump this week. Back to back opening jacks here at the U.S. Open for Ascona. 56 total games to get to this point for the players as we take a look at Christian's bowling ball going right through the 1-3 for that opening double. 24 games of qualifying over three days. Then they cut to the Casters round, another eight, and then the top 24 for 24 games of match play. You talked about all the bowling Sterner has done over the last two weeks, Randy, and it has done some damage to his right hand. You guys talked about it last week on the Masters show, but yeah. some vitamin E capsules coming into play yeah he's so he's learning he's learning the tricks that, that we kind of knew about back in the day so he takes a vitamin e capsule cracks it open pours that vitamin e oil all over it and then bandages it up and leaves it overnight but you gave him some um some taping some patch advice last night how did he miss this out I, I, old man peterson had to straighten him out well because we lived with uh, a cut patch and new skin back in the day but he said every time he pulls the new skin or the patch off his thumb it pulls the skin off i said I said, bro, you got to soak that first. Rookie mistake. He's only been on the tour for 16 years. Oh, late drop gets the strike there in the third. Yeah, huge break on the trip two forward because remember the first time on that lane, Rob, he went light, comes back and goes light again. Watch this break. Bucket standing. Not anymore. You talked about the high use of urethane. The other theme this week at the U.S. Open, high scores. Take me through kind of the conversation of why urethane has been in place so much this week and why we're seeing these numbers that we haven't seen in decades right after Ascona goes for his third straight. Stand up triple to start for Ascona. Randy? Well, let me give you some numbers. Uh, 226. Average just to make it to the telecast. Um, I, I can't remember U.S. Open ever being that high. I remember uh, 226 being a great score to U.S. Open. That's what they averaged. The urethane or the non-reactive bowling ball is in play because the oil pattern is dictating that. It's telling these players not only where to play, but what equipment to throw. And they absolutely lived in the pocket using the non-reactive bowling balls. Are the numbers too high for your liking? Yes. Why? because this is the U.S. Open. Hail <laughs> How long has it been? It's 
been a while, man. It's been a while. Had to practice in front of the bathroom mirror today. I heard you all the way down the hall. Oh, yeah. You were on the, the hotel. Yeah, you were on the second floor, huh? A actually, I was on the third floor and still heard you. Yep. Great shot here. But getting back to the the, the comment about I, me thinking that the scores are too high. I think that in any sport, U.S. Open is is synonymous with being very difficult, very hard, demanding, very tough to move. Demand, I mean, grueling, right? Mm -hmm. And it's always been that way. So you want to see 260s, 250s, 270s? No. No. I do not. I want to see 210, 220. Oh, that low. low. I want to see these guys just grinding. Last week's pattern for the Masters, that's U.S. Open style. They were so brutally tough, and, and that's kind of what the U.S. Open's always been about. And I think that's what's made the winning the U.S. Open so gratifying. We have seen seven straight strikes after Sterner opened this match with a nine spare. Again, leading to the conversation about the high scores this week at the U.S. Open. I'm a high score guy. I like to see big, sure. bouncy, sexy, beautiful numbers. Some work to do here. Light. Light, light. Every shot on that left lane for Sterner has come up light. This time it's the 2 4 5. So the adjustment for me would be to have Jason move his feet a little bit to the right and keep that target the same. And let's try to straighten that angle a little more to, towards the 1 3 pocket. Slams that one down. Remains perfect. Bookends three straight strikes. The seven spare. As Kona has been perfect through four. He's already the first from Puerto Rico to win a PBA Tour title. Did it in 2018 in Wilmington. Trying now to become the first from Puerto Rico to win a major tour title. Hey, a nice birthday present. Tell me about it. The 10. Leaves the quitter 10 pin. The quitter 10. The quitter 10, yeah. Didn't want it, huh? That's your favorite pin. Do you even work out 10 pin? <laughs> Apparently, this one does it because that's a weak 10. It's a good start, though, for Christian. See him change that thumb hole. That's the interchangeable thumb that can go from one bowling ball to the next. The purpose for that is to make different bowling balls all feel the same. Randy, we've seen the 10 pin come into play at past U.S. Opens. Woo! Skinny jeans! <laughs> this corner remains clean. Oh, just enough of it. Squeezed. Got to suck in the breath on those. As Kona can max out with a 279. See his best finish ever at a major. Was ninth. That was the TOC in Jupiter, Florida. Lead is at 12. We begin the sixth. See the difference there where the six goes to the sidewall and does what it's supposed to do with its job and just absolutely fillets that 10 pin. Tight one, Randy, so far between Ascona and Sterner. We conclude match one from the U.S. Open next. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate, believe you will. And by Kia, introducing the all-new Sorento, the world's first storytelling machine.
Oh man, how beautiful is Lake Tahoe. Randy, you tell me you're gonna be sticking around town for a couple days skiing? Man, what I, I, I can't wait to hit the slopes. Go to Noah Star, maybe Alpine Meadows. I don't think your left knee wants to ski. My left knee is like- It's uh, no part of it. My left knee wants no part of skiing. Here's Sterner, close out the seventh. Or rather, just close out the sixth. He likes this lane. Come on. Mm. Doesn't like that result. Vicious ring and 10 there. Just under 19 miles an hour, that throw. Well, they don't call him Flash for nothing. He, he's a, a speed guy, and it's one of the things he's really worked on, Rob, is trying to control that ball speed. He likes to throw it. He's in great shape. He likes, uh, to, he likes to hustle to the line. That's how he got yeah, the nickname Flash. Right. All, all the guys were saying, dude, as soon as you get the ball, you're already up at the line Throw and take some time. And you're right, he admitted, you know, speed control, getting to the lane. And once you're at the lane, so critical, he's had to force himself to slow down. And what a season he's having right now. He gets a win. He's right in player of the year conversations. We take a look at our strike track powered by Kia. And uh, both players playing fairly similar. Ascona, just a couple of boards left of Sterner, but that's because of ball speed. You can see how much faster Sterner's ball is traveling down the lane, and uh, therefore, Azcona is going to have a little more shape, a little more motion. See the launch position differences there. Sterner to begin the seventh. He can max out with a 256. his fourth strike of this opening match. Look at these two numbers here, Rob. So it's 5.7 at the arrows, and then 5.5 uh, at the break point. That's about as straight up the lane as you can throw it. Straighter is greater here at the US Open. Well, it was the last uh, 32 games when they went to this pattern. strike for Azcona. Five-time member of the Puerto Rican national team. You know there's a party going on right now in Puerto Rico watching this one, right? There is. He's got two brothers, yep. Javier and Michael, two sisters, Nicole and Valerie, and he said one of them is hosting the party. We think it's, we think it's Michael, could be Javier, but here's my request. Javier, Michael, Nicole, Valerie, Send us a picture, send us a video, send it to, let's say, just send it to PBA Tour Twitter. And we're going to do our darndest to get it on, yeah. right? Because we want to see this reaction in Puerto Rico to what the birthday boy, Christian Ascona, is doing up here in Reno. Strike number seven. Well, if you think they were having a good time in Puerto Rico, what do you think happened when you mentioned all their names? They're going crazy. And then Brother Christian steps up cooler than a polar bear's feet and buries another 10 in the pit. NASCAR coming up next here on FS1. Continue the blue EMU 500 coverage. Sterner. In a bit of a hole right now, down 33. Needs to start stringing strikes big time here to conclude. Had one in the seventh, needs to build on it here in the eighth. Back to back. Yeah, real good on that right lane, Rob. Only the one ring in 10, but you see our strike track numbers there also. I Lots of great stats as uh, Jason's going to take a re-rack, but lots of great stats that come to us from Lane Talk. And for more information on their great app and all their great information, go to lanetalk.com. Just saw bottom left of your screen headshot. And I think a lot of people are going, I don't, I don't know who that is. Why am I looking at that, that kid right there? That is 18-year-old Anthony Nyer, your three seed. He is up next to take on the winner, Sterner Ascona. The Nyer story, amazing on so many levels. Can't wait to jump into it when we see him in our next match. Must strike here for Sterner. So that's 
That's his second three-bagger of this match. He cuts the lead to 13. He finally got the ball to face up hard enough on that left lane. And he will finish on the right lane as Kona now steps up in the ninth and tenth. A nice shot here, but no matter what, he can't shut out Christian Ascona. Did you know that Christian only lives like 30 minutes from me? He lives in the town you used to live in, Claremont, right? That is correct. You know who else lives in Claremont? Norm Duke. You know who else? Jason Couch. That is correct. <laughs> Ten mm. pin. That's all right because you still see the max score there with a spear here. If he strikes twice and gets nine, he shuts out Sterner. Again, there's that quitter 10. Do you even lift? Not, yeah. not, not even a little. Mm. It's like freshman football, right? You don't even lift, bro. You don't even know. Got to get that 10 pin up to JV varsity status. Last time that 10 pin let, was lifting, it was doing ankles. Like a little Velcro wrap around ankle weights, walking on the strand. 95% of the time, 10 pin taken care of here on the tour. As Kona drops that one into the pit, so he remains clean. Just his second spare of this opening match. And we transition now to the 10th. Two strikes and nine for the win. Told us how much he likes this facility. The ball just seems to strike here for him. The patterns have worked out well for him. Good news for Christian, Rob, is he's been perfect on this left lane. Looking for his fifth straight strike on the left lane, and he finds it. Well, he, he got away with this one, I think, because he double dribbled it. And the ball still held line perfectly. Try to get you a replay of that, but you can definitely hear it. Here it comes right here. Watch this, Rob. Good news is it's still 10 back. He needs another strike. And then nine. Yeah, anything less, Sterner still has a chance. Christian Ascona taking a re-rack. Great strategy, make your opponent sit and wait. Collect your thoughts as well. Step up and make the best shot you can make and give yourself a chance to win this match. Come on. Just needs nine on the next shot and he will move on. Well, he gets this one a little bit to the right, and again, it had such a good touch to it, and that part of the lane is in play, so watch this here. And it just really reads that friction and ends up in a perfect spot. Now nine, and he moves on to take, take on the youngster. Needs nine for the win. He'll take ten and move on. So your five seed, the birthday boy, Christian Azcona, moves on to your next match. And it's going to be an interesting one. He's got an 18-year-old with some serious bowling DNA in his system, Anthony Nyer from Milton, Pennsylvania, hits the U.S. Open lanes next when our coverage of the U.S. Open on FS1 continues. We welcome you back to the PBA on FS1. Randy, we're going to flash back 10 years ago 
10th anniversary of the U.S. Open, Major Mika Koivu Niemi taking on Storm and Norman Duke. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember this U.S. Open like it was yesterday. Norman Duke was dead in the water. He threw the last four strikes, ninth and 10th frame to force Mika to mark. Mika throws a great shot, leaves a 10 pin. No problem, right? Not a problem. He's Greatest fair shooter in the world. Uh, yeah. Couldn't believe it. I, I think the look on Norm's, Norm Duke's face right there kind of says it all. And then the turn of the head, and he does the math. Wait a second. Yeah. I get to raise an eagle. Yep. Incredible. I remember getting to the airport, and I was I was still buzzing. Like, what just what did I just see? Well, what you just saw here at this edition of the U.S. Open is Christian Azcona taking care of Sterner, a two-point win, 258-256. That is a huge win for Christian Azcona because it gives him a nice little bump in the PBA playoff yeah. standings. This is the final event before May's PBA playoffs coming your way from beautiful Madison, Connecticut. Cannot wait to get back to Connecticut for that one. So as Kona gets himself uh, a major win and a big boost in points as we look at the PBA playoff points list right now, there's your top 10 right now. Troop, Doherty, Francois Lavoie, Chris Vi, our one seed later today, Jacob Buttrup, today's two seed. Uh, it gets interesting right around the cut line and it gets interesting because we've just gotten verification that your number 14 person on the list, Jason Belmonte, will not participate in the playoffs, going to head back home to the birth of his fourth child. Uh, Jason, wish you and your family the best. So that line can actually slide down one more, which means Mr. Ascona slides on yeah. in. The big story next, though, another teenager, Anthony Nyer, set to hit the lanes. This is a young man that doesn't look like a young man, yeah. but certainly acts like it. Yeah, you know, we talked about it with uh, Robards last week, and, and it's amazing just how much more seasoned the youngsters are now. They have much more stuff to bowl, more tournaments, better equipment, better coaching, and they're just ready. You know, they, they're ready for these types of moments. And, you know, Spencer Robarge proved that last week. And I I, I don't see Anthony Nyer not proving himself here today. D does he look phased in the seat? He, d he looks pretty comfy. He looks fine. He, lo he looks like you sitting on a seat on a Sunday. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need another beverage over here and the remote batteries changed. <laughs> Nyer as Kona coming up next on FS1. <laughs> Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler back here with you inside the National Bowling Stadium in Reno. We update our U.S. Open stepladder and we're set now for match number two. Five seed Christian Azcona, two pin winner over Jason Sterner. Up next, the teenager, the three seed, Anthony Nyer. Azcona will start. Lives in Claremont, Florida now, native of Puerto Rico. One PBA Tour title on his resume. Looking to make it two. Also looking to become the first from Puerto Rico to win a major on the PBA Tour. <laughs> Continues his strike expertise here. Had 10 strikes last game. Today's three seed, 18-year-old Pennsylvania native Anthony Nyer, who looks to become the youngest major winner in PBA history. Talked about the DNA in this young man. We're going to get to that in a second, Rand. We got some flashback video. Oh, yeah, it's great. That is just so enjoyable. We'll see his dad, Andy, win a tour title. Here's Anthony under the lights. The lefty. Oh, that close to a 7-10 opportunity. Instead, it's just the seven. Big break early for the teenager. That would have been rude. Not a nice welcome to the PBA right? Tour under the lights. A few more revolutions than Father Andy, and I know Andy. Andy's really going to appreciate that one. <laughs> Just a few more revolutions. I mean, this hot falls it down there. Yeah. Hey, Kimberly, 
He was here at the Masters last week. Didn't quite go as well as he was hoping, so he made some big changes. Absolutely, he did, Rob, because ahead of this U.S. Open, Anthony described his first year as a pro as disappointing. So before the start of this event, he took three days off and practiced four to five hours a day, specifically on lowering his swing and getting his timing back. Now, that's, that practice seems to have paid off because before the show, I spoke with him, and he said... My swing is where I want it to be, and my timing is better than it ever was. Let's see if those adjustments can translate to his first win on a major telecast. And he gets his first strike on a major telecast. He finished tied for 83rd, Kimberly, last week in the same building at the USBC Masters. Let's take a look, Randy, at his approach in that strike. Yeah, well, it's a very interesting approach for a player that uses his thumb. Big, long third, and then you could see the two right and left feet actually touch each other. It's real reminiscent of a two-handed style, but Anthony uses his thumb in one hand. It's got that little hop step. Yeah, we're, like, we're used to seeing that with the two-handers. As Kona started the last match with four straight strikes. That trend will not continue here. Just a little bit high, leaving the four pin. So I would expect Christian to move his feet and his target a little bit left. And when I say a little bit, about an inch with both. Remember, 39 boards across the lane, each board about one inch wide. Christian's going to move, make a what we call a one and one move. One with his feet, one with his target on that right lane. Curls that one in. I love the walk away. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I got it. I got it. Two pin win in match number one for your five seed Ascona. The winner of this one to take on your two seed, Jacob Buttruff, trying to win his first U.S. Open. Boy, he has been so close so many times. Was dominant this week for a majority of the U.S. Open. That's been kind of a theme for him through the years at U.S. Opens. Yeah, he led five of seven rounds here this week. Strike, spare, strike to start here for Ascona in match two. Nice little messenger. You know, the good news for Anthony Nyer is that as Kona didn't jump off to that quick start with three in a row and you know anytime you're on television for the first time you're always looking to find a way to actually bring oxygen into your body and that's kind of a really good way to help that mm -hmm. lefty back on that right lane oh my gosh oh my gosh Oh, gravity was in a battle, and it lost just barely. Uh, I think this was on the half board. If I could get the strike track numbers, it was real close to the half board. Half board? Let's go quarter board. Wow, he dropped two in the gutter during practice, Randy. I mean, that is dancing with the devil. Instead, it's a double and an early lead. Right? Isn't that crazy? From catastrophe was, to elite. It was a half inch from, from being zero. My goodness. Here he goes again. Fearless. And another Come strike on. for the teenager. You know, I think this is some of the funnest stuff that you can see in pro professional bowling when the bowlers get to play the extreme outside line. I can't tell you how many amateurs are scared to death of that because the only thing that they're thinking about is the worst outcome, and that would be zero. And these guys, they don't think that way. I grew up on a gutter shot in Southern California. I loved playing outside of first arrow. It's what I grew up on. <laughs> I haven't gotten my breath back. I mean, that is insane. My goodness. So as Kona, methodical, able to calm things down here. Oh, man. He's got a big challenge ahead of him. My goodness. 
Well, he didn't make a big enough move on that lane, and you can see the ball jumping right through the face. And so what he's going to do is he's going to try to cut the bowling ball over here to the left side of the four pin and slice it into the 10. Just four and a half percent of the time on the tour, the 410 is dropped. Open frame for Ascona in the fourth. Do you want to watch all the PBA classics? I know Randy does. Yep. You can stay up to date on PBA exclusive content and tournament highlights. All you need to do, Randy, write it down. All right, head okay. to PBA.com to yep. subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can catch up on all the PBA action. Head to PBA.com today. I think in a moment we're going to show a clip that we might have swiped from the PBA.com right. YouTube channel. I'm on there right now. As Kona to open up the fifth after an open frame gets a strike. Needed that. Well, let's see. Uh what young Master Nyer can do about that opening that was given to him by Ascona in the fourth. Yes, episode one of Extreme Living, the bowling edition <laughs> with Anthony Nyer. Folks, watch how close this one gets to the gutter. Double wood. So location looked pretty good, but maybe just a little firm. And he has to play the extreme outside line just to find some friction. Anthony and I are one of two southpaws we have on today's telecast. The other, you'll see him in the next match. Jacob Buttroff. Nair drops the double wood. Can we flash back now? Yes, let's We've do We've been it. waiting for this. 1994, the Hall of Fame Championship. Anthony's dad, Andy, who kind of looks like you a little bit, Randy. <laughs> He's way better looking, but let me tell you something. Nobody suitcased it better than Andy Nyer did. Who was he taking on in the title match? WR, WJ, the bearded legend. Andy was a heck of a bowler. Very surprising that he only came away with one title. And you saw and an eagle is awarded. Yeah. Just like an eagle awarded today. And could his son Anthony be picking it up? Anthony picking up plenty of strikes here in his first match under the national television lights. Four strikes for him so far. So Nyer can max out with a 268. He's got a lead over Christian Ascona. We conclude match two from the US Open next. Anthony Nyer with the seat and a hefty lead over Christian Ascona here in match number two of the 2021 U.S. Open, the 77th edition of this historic, wonderful bowling tournament. Coming your way live from the National Bowling Stadium here in Reno. Jason Belmonte, your defending champ. He did not make the show this year. Ascona gets a strike there, so that's two in a row for Christian and his fourth overall strike. Yeah, Belmonte finished 12th this week. A little disappointing for him, especially when you're defending. But not a bad week overall. Take a look at Christian and watch how much he opens that hand right there at the top of the swing. And then cups the wrist and then uncorks it like throwing a yo-yo into the floor. Watch this. There it is right there. Look how open the body is. And then the fingers right up the back of the bowling ball. Really impressed by the 27 year old and the year he's having as well. I think the goal was to get into the top 16 for many players and get into the playoffs. And Christian did that. Yeah, through the nose. Well, anytime a player looks back after throwing a shot, 
uh, that, that's usually indicative of that lane breaking down and the player not staying ahead of the transition. So remember, it started on the right lane, Rob, when it started to go high, and now it's happened on the left lane, a lane that he was perfect on up until that shot. And this is a perfect setup for his competitor here, match number two, Anthony Nyer. First time under the lights, just 18 years old, being able to bowl his way, which is what his dad passed on to him last night when he saw him advance to tonight's today's title show and oh, an open frame for Ascona. I mean, this is his second open frame, and he has hand-delivered this one to Nyer. Gift wrapped. It's not over, but my goodness, now he can only max with the 211. You know, even when it's high scoring, the U.S. Open is still the U.S. Open. And it still commands respect and your attention. Not to mention the amount of pressure that comes with trying to win this event. This kid 100% has my attention. I hold my breath every time he releases it. And I don't exhale until it hits a pin. This kid is on a roll. The ginger assassin is moving on, man. Watch out for this kid. Take a look at some other finishers here. Sam Cooley just missing the show. Our good friend Bill O'Neill finishing in seventh. The Hall of Famer Tommy Jones in tenth. Belmo finishing at twelfth. He is just about on his way home. Stepping away from the tour for a while and tending to family business. Wish he and his wife and his kids best of luck. Number four on the way for the Belmo family. Go through. Another strike for Neuer. Nastier than a vulture's breath, this kid is just pounding him right now, doing exactly what you do when given the opportunity. It's a 57-pin advantage. Kimberly talked to him before the show about the confidence that he had. And he, and he knew there was chatter yesterday. Hey, can this kid handle it? Hey, can this kid handle the pressure? He knew about it, and he just, he wasn't indignant to us, but he kind of made it clear, they can talk all they want. I'm all right. I've got it. And he is sitting in the catbird seat to move on to match number three. As Kona here in the eighth. Rob, getting back to Nyer, his last eight games of match play, he went six and two and averaged almost 250. So, yeah, I mean, that's a, exactly your point. Nobody expected him to. The kid steps up. That's Kona eyeing the two pin here, taking care of 97% of the time on the tour. Walk away as he drops that one. Tomorrow here on FS1, battle in the NL Central. Cubs taking on the Brewers. Action begins 7 Eastern, available also on the Fox Sports app. Did you enjoy that uh, Dodgers World Series ring ceremony the other day, my friend? I did not see it. How, how did it go? I didn't see it either. I'm a Tampa Bay Rays fan. I just turned that off. We got burned. That's because I'm a Dodger fan, and my Dodgers are. took your Rays down. Yes, they did. Jacob Buttruff up next, your two seed, looking like he's going to take on the teenager, Anthony Nyer. Here's Azcona, though, in the ninth. Late drop of the 10. I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, Randy, right? And as much as we're enjoying Anthony Nyer, but we've shown you time and time again, just how close he is dancing to that gutter. Yeah. I watched him last night. I, I had to go down and watch him with my own eyes because I've never seen him throw it. And about his fourth shot, he threw one in. And then I got up and I left. All right, we didn't jinx him there. I feel really good about that. My goodness, no doubt. pins flying everywhere. And he knows, right? Just keep, keep it on the lane right now and you're going to move on. <laughs> Neuer looking to become the youngest player to win a major title. 18 years, 11 months, 15 days old. A couple weeks away from his 19th birthday. Curls that one in for a spare in the ninth. 
Now, Anthony Simonson, who did not compete this week, holds the current record for youngest player to win a major, won the 2016 USBC Majors. Masters. I'm sorry, Masters, yes. And a victory by Nair would also make him the third youngest player to win a title. Three days older than when Simonson won his first. Who holds the record for youngest to win a title? I've heard of this guy. Uh-huh. Look at that slide to take out the 10. The legend, Norm Duke, won the 1983 Cleveland Open at the age of 17. Do you know who I think he beat? Oh, gosh. It, it, I think, was it Mark Roth or Earl Anthony? It was one or the other. Somebody help me. Send me a, send me a text. I think he beat Earl on that show. Strike there for Azcona. Nair, they're fast-tracking things because Nair has moved on, picks up the spare. So we are getting set for our next matchup. The teenager, Anthony Nair, advances. He will take on your two-seed, Jacob Buttruff, who has been so close so many times here at the U.S. Open. Is 2021 the year he finally claims this title? Last year at the U.S. Open in Lincoln, Nebraska, Anthony Simonson taking on Jason Belmonte in the title match. Belmo just blowing up the rack. Cleaning that one up for yet another major title for Mr. Belmo. Somebody's going to get a green jacket today. Could it be Anthony Nyer? Frankly, do they have a green jacket big enough? For Anthony Nyer. Yes, yeah, they, they, they do. He's a big kid, but they've, they've got a big enough one for him. Man, that kid was so impressive. Last game, there's a look at Nyer trying to become the youngest to ever win a major. And Nyer, the three seed, able to move on with a 36-pin win over your five seed. Christian Azcona, seven strikes in that match for Nyer. The story, though, a couple open frames from Azcona, which opened up the door for the young teenager. We are trying to fill that fifth and final vacancy for the guaranteed rate PBA Super Slam, which comes your way next Sunday, 1230 Eastern on Fox. You win a major, you get an invite. Who's there already? Let me tell you, pretty good looking group. Yeah, it really is. I mean, some strong players. And then we're going to add another one from this group. Uh, the youngster and uh, Jacob Butcher, of two southpaws going out in our next match. Plus, uh, going back to next week in the Super Slam. You got two guys who are early contention for player of the year, Tom yeah. Doherty and Kyle Troop as well. Yep. Interesting, Tom electing not to bowl here in Reno. Yeah, that was talked about. <laughs> I bet it was. Just, just saying. <laughs> he and I talked about it. How about that? Did you? That's how much we talked about it. All right, so Anthony Nyer, 18-year-old from Pennsylvania. Yesterday, after he qualified, Randy, I went out to the parking lot. What did I see? Him loading up his pickup truck full of bowling balls. He drove himself from Milton, Pennsylvania, out here to Reno to try and become the first to win a major title at this young age. And he has got a major test ahead of him here in the first frame. Yeah, not the start he wanted. This is a little tuggy, little tug right. Ooh, a game effort. If you're going to have an open frame, that's where you do it. 26-year-old Jacob Buttruff is today's two seed. Twice he's been a U.S. Open bridesmaid. Is today the day he earns a U.S. Open title and his second career major. And Jacob was second to Tom Doherty in the World Championship. Three top five finishes in the U.S. Open in the last five years. He said this week it was all about stamina. Stamina, versatility, true test of talent. Those are kind of the buzzwords he used when we asked him what, what this U.S. Open really means, kind of describe it. And then we said, all right, well, winning the U.S. Open, what does that mean? He goes... Royalty.
Kimberly, Jacob was watching the last match. What were his big takeaways? Uh, he sure was, because during that match, I saw him intensely watching it. So I asked him during the commercial if he learned anything, and he said yes. He was watching Anthony since he is the other lefty on the show. And he says it seems that Anthony is losing his work and needs to stay super slow on that left lane. So I might need to force him out of his game plan a little and maybe even have myself end on the right lane. Randy, what do you take away from that? I, I have no idea. I'm right-handed. Now, <laughs> oh, Buttruff, 26, but clearly the veteran in this battle. I think the big advantage for Jacob is ball speed. He can throw it softer. Oh. Another advantage, he's not the one seed here at the U.S. Open. True. Which doesn't quite make sense, but clearly the one seed role for him hasn't been working out. Yeah, him. it it, it, it had not panned out in the past. I think this is a great spot for him to be in, Rob, because if he can get past young Nyer, he's got that one game under his belt. He goes into the title match, and he's confident, loose, and knows what the lanes are giving him. Come on, Ten Pin, get on down! You know, when we're talking about youngsters winning in the sport of bowling as we take a look at this light mixer, can, can I throw a little something at you, Rob? Please. So how about Wendy McPherson, who is a PWBA and USBC Hall of Famer? Did she, do you, do you know that she won the US Open at age 18 on her spring break from high school? Let me tell you, that's not how I did my spring breaks. Speaking of spring breaks. Anthony Nyer, 100% looks like the kid that you would go up to in high school and say, hey, uh, can you uh, maybe give me some California coolers? This dude does not look 18 is my point. We all had that dude in high school, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. We, I was not that dude in high I'm still not that dude. I was thinking more like you were going to say something like, hey, listen, if I give you my lunch money, can I get some protection? <laughs> that, that would work, too. I really like this kid's demeanor. His attitude, oh my goodness. The RPMs, fearless out there, and I love it. 18, I'm going on the tour. That's what I'm doing. He has made a commitment, got his PBA card on a Wednesday in October, and what did he tell us? That Saturday won his first regional in Strathmore, New Jersey. And we talked about earlier, the kid's got PBA DNA coursing through his veins. Jacob Buttruff, though, with an early hold on this game, up 21 as we begin the fourth. So back-to-back -back jacks for Jacob. He looks for a three-bagger here. You see what he's done this week, 14-10 and 10 in match play, a 229 average over the course of 56 games. He's quietly had a nice season. Hasn't he? And I think that quiet will shift to a little bit louder volume should he win the U.S. Open. strike for Jacob. Just unnecessary roughness on the seven pin. Through the flag. Oh my goodness. The four pin is just going to go like all primal on the seven right here. Watch. So he takes a seat up 31. So now some pressure on Nyer. Turns 19 April 26th. Longtime member of Team USA. Yeah. Only one strike here in his second match and our third match of the day. And so you can see what happens when players are using these non-reactive or urethane equipment and they're playing fairly close to one another because these bowling balls have so much surface added to them with sandpaper, with Aberlon pads. They're, the texture's so rough that they absolutely crushed the oil pattern and beat it up. And Jacob is just inside of Nyer, and it's affecting his shot. How do you react to the use of so much urethane this week at the U.S. Open? I, like I said, I haven't seen this much urethane go down the lane in a, in a very long time. And I literally walked in last night at the start of match play. 24 players were using urethane. Does that bother you? Yeah. Why? 
because I think I think it it it's making us go in reverse. This is essentially equipment we used back in the 80s. And granted, they've been upgraded. The weight blocks have gotten more dynamic. The urethane itself's gotten a little stronger. Um, but you know, we're we're in the business of of entertainment and and evolving and moving forward. Um, and I think that that I'd rather not see this type of bowling ball go, go down the lane each and every week. 4 in a row for Buttruff. And obviously Rob if the reactive stuff was better they would use it. Worked, that's what they would use. Right. And they'd be playing the same part of the lane probably maybe moving in and swinging a little bit more but this is the recipe for success. And that's why everybody did it. I guarantee you they tried to use reactive but it didn't work. Lead at 42 for Buttruff. Took care of Nair earlier this week in match play. Oh, and another strike for the Southpaw. Trying to win that elusive U.S. Open title for the first time is Jacob Buttruff, and he's built himself a nice 52 pin lead. We wrap up Buttruff. Nair win our coverage of the U.S. Open on FS1 returns. inside the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, continuing live coverage of the 2021 U.S. Open, the 77th edition of this prestigious tournament. Teenager trying to win it for the first time, Anthony Nyer. But he's in a bit of a struggle here in his second match and third overall, down by 52, but working on a strike here in the sixth. I think he's got high every, t every shot on that lane. 4-6 in the first, then he leaves a six pin, and, and then here again he goes through the nose, leaving the 2-4. Has not figured out the transition, Rob, and again, how much turbulence is Jacob Buttress ball creating for him? Well, it's not like Anthony doesn't have a lot of experience. Year upon year of Team USA experience has helped get him to this point, again, this is his first year, not even really his first year, just his first couple of months right. as a pro mm -hmm. on the tour. And it takes a while to figure things out. You see a two-time junior gold championship winner. You know, I think there's so many processes to becoming a champion on this tour, and especially winning a major. And uh, I'll get to those processes right after this shot. See that ball breaking loose early. 7-10. Come on, man. Again, the look back. So That's what that I mean. I don't know why I re -racked. Right through the face, leaving the 7-10. The 7-10 only been made on television three times in the history of professional bowling on TV. Come on, kid. Do it. Oh! He did it. He did it. He, did it. he, did it. he got the 7-10, Randy. Oh, Goodness, the ginger assassin just dropped the 710. You bet, kid. You bet. Oh, man. Give me some oxygen and water to spare the game. Brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate. Believe you will. I believe the ginger assassin can drop the 710. Oh, man. It actually came off of the bowling ball. Insane. Into the seven. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, here's Buttruff. Gets a strike. Boring. Right? Give me a 7-10 awesome. all day, every day. It was awesome, Jacob. Oh, man, I wish those masks were off. I want to see that smile. Fourth time in TV history, a 7-10 has been dropped, and it's the teenager, Anthony and I are doing it. Oh, man. Pops back home, Andy. Is, is crazy? loving it. How about the last one before him 90, to make it? 91? Was just Stayrook, another southpaw. That 
actually the last person to get the 710 in this facility. Yeah. Ernie McCracken. Was that, a, was that against me? Might have been. Oh, man, that was awesome. Like, that was bucket list type thing, man. That was just so cool. Following our uh, PBA bowling coverage today, NASCAR Cup Series racing from Martinsville, Virginia, the Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief 500. Last night's race stopped. Rain out there after 42 of 500 laps. So Denny Hamlin will pick it back up as your leader. The race resumes for Eastern, one Pacific right here on FS1. Well, Nyer can't get strikes, but he can drop Almost a 710 right now. Just wow. two strikes here, unable Man, to figure you. things out. And, and you can see the problems coming early, Randy, with the open frame in the first. Just hammers those two back in the pit. Get another spare. So that's three straight eight spares for him. All right, so think about this, Rob. So it's like you're in an airplane, right? Mm -hmm. And you're getting ready to take off. But it, and you're like in a little puddle jumper. And right in front of you, there's a 747 taking off, right? So it takes off, and, and now you're going to take off right behind him. What do you think that's going to feel like? You want to talk about jet wash? I mean, so <laughs> that's, that's exactly what's going on with this young man right here. And you know what? All the experience in the world is not going to prepare you for this unless you go through it at a U.S. Open, and that's exactly what's happening to him right now. Buttruff running away with this one, up 65. That one a sloppy little shot, but it's not going to hurt him. 2-7, baby split. You know why they call it the baby split, Rob? Because it's smaller than the big split? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice, cover. Oh, nice cover. So, I mean, that's a good, that's a really good impressive cover. You know what's a better cover? Yeah, the other one? The other one. I, I want, can I give me the 710, please? Yeah. Anthony Nyer. Bing, bong, boom. Oh, that is just glorious television. Uh, he, he's got that for the rest of his life, man. Pretty incredible. And that's going to help that drive back home to Pennsylvania. Strike there. Four players. Four in the Ever. history. So Jacob moves on. And we, we thought, you know, Nyer was in position to make history today. We just didn't think it was going to be in the, of the 710 variety. Right. I, I'm still buzzing over that. I'm, I'm telling sorry. you, that's crazy. So good. And, and lost in it is Jacob Buttruff is really rolling nicely here. And now he's one win away from his first ever U.S. Open title. One win away from getting himself reinserted into the play of the year category and getting himself a slot. That's Super Slam next week outside DC. All right, so since we're both still buzzing yes, sir. about the 710, one, one more 710 stat. Ready? Please. First player to ever make it, Mark Roth. The next three, all southpaws. Interesting. John Mazza, Jess Stayrook, and now Anthony Nyer. And now up our one seed, Chris Nye in an unusual position. More on that when we return. Well, there's one more vacancy left at this year's guaranteed rate PBA Super Slam. Kyle Troop, your PBA Players Championship winner, will be there. Oh. Francois Lavoie, your Kia PBA TOC champ, will be there. Our good friend Tom Doherty, your guaranteed rate PBA World Champ, yes, will be there. USBC Masters champ Thomas Larson, the fourth invitee and now the winner of the U.S. Open. All the major winners at the Guaranteed Rate PBA Super Slam comes your way next Sunday, April 18th, 1230 Eastern, live over on Fox. The big story, Jacob Buttruff with the win, but Anthony Nyer, the 7-10 conversion. The teenager standing by with Kimberly.
That was so amazing to watch. Now, Anthony, I know you wanted to make it to the finals, but you did something only three other people have ever done in PBA history, and you made the 710 split live on television. So walk us through what was going through your mind, because everybody here stood up and started screaming when you made it. Um, I mean, at that point, I was just kind of ready. Like, I'm 710, Jacob pretty well had me beat. But um, I was like, I mean, just kind of throw hard and hope. I mean, it's not really a spare that there's any strategy to. So I just, I mean, I was kind of shocked when I made it. I never expected to make it. Well, you did. And like I said, everybody here was on their feet and I was screaming. Um, but let's talk about the fact that you said prior to this, you said that this season was disappointing for you, but you made a major show. You made a 710 split on national television. How would you describe the season now? Um, I would I would describe it as a good season. I mean, I came out here, I didn't expect to win because, I mean, rookie year, you never expect to win. But to finish third at a, at a U.S. Open, I mean, that's pretty impressive for me. So it, I'm happy with it. Impressive indeed. And you got a bright future ahead of you. It's your first year as a pro. You're going to be amazing. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you. You know who's uh, really impressed right now is his dad. And one thing that really impressed me, Rob, when you were taking us through all the videos of the, the major winners this season, they all had the same reaction, didn't they? You see all the emotion yeah. in their eyes and in their face, and that's what winning a major is all about. Well, Chris Vi trying to join that reaction list, trying to get himself to the Super Slam next week. But first, it's the title match, uninterrupted of the U.S. Open. Vi Buttruff next, live on FS1. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate, believe you will. And by Kia, introducing the all-new Sorento, the world's first storytelling machine. Now, somebody's about to get that green jacket for the first time in their career. Will it be two-seed Jacob Buttruff or your number one seed, Chris Vi? Buttruff, a convincing win in his last match, 257-203. There's Chris Vi, just outside of Columbus, Ohio, fifth-year pro, looking for just his first tour title. Buttruff, the man with experience at this level, seven tour titles, one career major, came in Vegas back in 2019 at the USBC Masters been so close numerous times at the U.S. Open trying to finally win it. And he opens up with a strike. For the first time at a major 29-year-old Ohio native, Chris Vi is your number one seed. And Chris has been knocking on the door of major championship competition for the last two seasons. Last night, he needed two strikes in the 10th frame to overtake Jacob Buttrup. He did just that. He said, in order for me to win, I have to stay aggressive. I can't be passive. Aggressiveness is the key to winning. He doesn't come off as an aggressive guy, by the way. When we interviewed him, you know, I'm like, you know, look at your heart rate going. Look at the energy level. And he's like, listen, I'm pretty mild-mannered. I'm yeah. pretty calm. My guess is you're going to see some fist bumps and some barking if things go his way right today in Reno. So Vi starts off with a strike, and... Uh, Kimberly, he had some time off between the Masters and the U.S. Open, and he wisely used it. Plus, he's in a different position this time, something nice for him. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys mentioned earlier that Chris has made five of the last seven majors, but this is the first time that he is the number one seed. So we're in our pre-show interviews. We asked him, you know, what was it like to lead these TV finals? And he laughed and said, honestly, I'm just happy that I am not in the first match of the telecast because that's where I've always been. He smiled again and said, the big thing for me will be trying to figure out how to manage my time correctly. I'll probably just throw some shots, stay warm, and mentally prepare myself before the final, but we'll see how it goes. Oh. Ooh. It was that close to a perfect start. That 10 pin avoiding contact. This is the first time not in the opening match of a major telecast that he's made. Head pin came across looking for seconds and then decided against it. But, you know, we talked about Jason Sterner and, and bowling 
from March 29th until today in all those games. Chris Veit did the exact same thing. So Vi strikes spare. He takes a seat. Jacob Buttruff steps back up. Two-time runner-up this season already. Lost to Tom Doherty at the World Championships. Lost to Sean Maldonado at the Chameleon. Will the third time be a charm this season? Back-to-back -back opening jacks for Jacob. You know, the, the, the other great quality that Jacob Buttrip has is he's very gracious in defeat. He's the first one to congratulate his opponent or his opponents. Uh, he never makes excuses about anything. Um, and I, I think that's a great trait to have. And, um, you know, he admitted that last year wasn't exactly his best year and that he was trying to get rededicated, refocused the loss of his mother, and here he is, looking to win his first U.S. Open. All right. Just the three pin, way better than the 379, as Jakey puts the stop sign up. Jacob remains clean. The impact of the pandemic on youth sports has been significant. And while recovery has certainly started in some communities, too many children in need are still left on the sideline. Visit goodsports.org to learn how you can help Fox Sports and Good Sports restore play for at-risk youth and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Bye to close out the third. Strike nine spare to start for him. Oh, hit it. Mm, yeah! Great numbers here. As you see, he's going six to about three and a half. As you look at our strike track powered by Kia. And Chris Vi looking to take a lead with a strike in the fourth. It, Rob, stab some success in the majors, huh? Understatement, right? Fifth last year at the U.S. Open, and then another fifth at the World Championship. Made it to the East Regional Finals early this year. Fourth at the World Championship. Fifth last week at the Masters. Today, he'll finish no worse than second. This will be by far his best finish at any major. Originally, it was fourth at the World Championships this year. Strike there for Vi. And the interesting thing for Vi is he's vying for his first PBA Tour title. Not just his first major, his first Tour title after five years on the circuit. Last player to win a major as his first title was, I think it was Andrew Anderson. Buttruff in that unusual approach. And delivery getting another strike. So that's three out of four for Jacob. Yeah, you said it, Rob. Unusual is exactly how you would describe it. Look at that cupped wrist. And then as he lets go of the bowling ball, he continues to slide. The slide leg straightens up. It's a very unusual style, but... Um, Make no mistake about it, this young man knows how to bowl. If you were a bowling instructor and this young man, you didn't know who he was, showed up and that was the first shot he showed you, what would you do? I'd change everything. <laughs> Don't change a thing. Come on, come on, roll into it. Not enough. You know, it was like when Amleto Monicelli first came out on tour and he had the left arm straight out in front of him and his hand wide open. And just about every player on tour said, this kid won't win a thing. Right. What are they and then know? it was like 20 titles or 21 <laughs> titles later and Hall of Fame stuff. And um, yeah, but I mean, if I would have looked at Jakey like early on, I, I would have said, hmm, gets the ball in the swing real early, kind of doesn't have a whole lot of knee bend, kind of keeps slide. I'd, I'd have probably gotten him to at least stop his slide and then 
stay flexed in that slide leg, and that would probably be, be probably be it. Well, you'd be looking at a payday because you're like, this is going to take a lot of lessons. <laughs> you're going to be hanging out with me for a while. You know, just give me your credit card number. <laughs> One pin game by in the fifth. Looking for three in a row and finding it. Oh my! No, a three bagger there for Vi. You like that one? Yeah, I mean, just super zapping the ten pin. This is the six. Check out the two-handed style, no thumb, and then watch the second pin from the right, the six pin. It goes to the sidewall and sends the ten pin to the blue tent. Vi making his third consecutive appearance here in the TV stepladder finals of a 2021 major. Fourth at the World Championship, fifth last week at the Masters. Trying to win it all this week. And a nine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Almost the four nine, and then he almost tripped the four into the nine. And then he he gives the uh, the stink eye to the arrows. And that, you know, the players, like, they look down and they kind of like, now I hit my target. Man, that should have struck. All right, so since it didn't, and since I threw it perfect, I have to make an adjustment. Second spare for Vi and following our coverage today, NASCAR Cup Series racing from Martinsville resumes. It's the Blue Emu Maximum Pain Relief 500. Last night, rain put a halt to it after 42 laps. Danny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin, your leader, as the race resumes. Coming up next, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, right here on FS1. Beauty there by Buttrip to even the, the game right here. Title match of the 77th U.S. Open, and these players are swinging it out. Both can max at 259. We're six frames through our uninterrupted broadcast of the U.S. Open Championship match. Next week, the tour off towards the D.C. area for the PBA Super Slam, live on Fox. The right lane has been awfully comfy for both of these guys. Left lane, not so much. Strike there for Jacob. Now it's all even. You were just ahead of yourself. You're a forward thinker. Well, I just kind of, uh, a little bit clairvoyant, and I kind of saw this coming. But I mean, watch this, man. Cobra Kai, sweep the leg. Strike hard, strike fast. Didn't like it. Right of target, but not a whole lot of damage. Yeah, you got it inside of target, and then that ball hit all that oil, and it just kind of flared out on him. Left the five pin. Pretty good break since there was five standing at one point. Tight one here in our championship match. Vi trying to win his first ever PBA Tour title. Buttress trying to win his first ever U.S. Open. Vi in the eighth. Messenger misses the ten. Mm. Not what you want to see if you're Chris Vi, especially since Buttriff is working on two in a row. 
and we're getting late in the title match of the United States Open. This one dropped 95% of the time on the tour. That'll increase the percentage. So for Vi, he's going to take a seat after not one, not two, but three straight nine spares. Buttruff looking for a three-bagger here. Good grief. Well, every, every shot that someone throws makes somebody happy, and right there, that made Chris Vi uh, breathe a little easier. As you can see, the max scores now have changed. But this is not a very good break for Jacob Buttruff. Left the eight, goes after the eight, drops the eight. It's exactly what you want in a major championship. You want it to come down to the last couple of frames and you want it to come down to shot making. The player that makes the shots ends up hoisting the trophy. It's a one pin match heading into the ninth frame. Foundation frame ninth. Buttruff up first on the left lane. Oh boy. And the lefty. <laughs> Completely threw it out the window. And he's staring at an open frame at the absolute worst time in this match. Three, seven, nine. We saw the seven, ten completed earlier today. The three, the seven, but the nine or rather the three and the nine drop, the seven stands. Open frame in the foundation frame ninth, ouch. He's been a bridesmaid so many times this season, so many times at the US Open, and he might be in that position again, because Chris Vi has just been granted a huge opening after three straight nine spares. Four strikes for Vi here in our championship match, looking for his fifth, looking to extend that lead, which was just gifted to him. Careful. Mm. Does anybody want it? Chris Vi with a spare. And nine spare strike will win the U.S. Open. Needs to take care of this first, which he does. So nine spare strike for the title. Remember what he said, I have to stay aggressive. Right of target all the way, Randy. Oh, leaves boy. the double wood. Oh, it sure was. That Two was. Eight. Yeah, that was right of Lake Tahoe. And just again, it just comes down to who's going to make the shot. That was the same shot that Buttruff made in the ninth frame on the left side of the lane, except the good break for Chris Vi is he didn't leave the 10 pin with it. care of that. Well, that's a nervy pickup there for Vi. Well done. Rob, do you think sudden death is good in sports? Do you, do you think it's exciting? Well, if Chris Vi strikes here, Jacob Buttruff has to strike out. And if he does, we go to sudden death.
If he doesn't strike on this ball he can lose. He's been passive. Changed his game to aggressive. How does he attack this? In the tent. Big strike for Vi. Cannot lose in regulation. Takes a seat, knowing Buttruff has to drop three straight racks. Last time up on this lane, Buttruff hits the pocket, leaves at solid eight. He's three of four on the right lane. Coming off an open frame in the ninth. Buttruff must have it. One down. Pretty, pretty good show we got here at the end. And to have this here at the U.S. Open, what a perfect stage for it. Yep. So great to be back in the renovated National Bowling Stadium. Buttruff still needs two more strikes. Come on, Messenger! Yeah! Messenger, seven in the pit, needs one more strike for a roll-off. Well, if you like pin action and you like messengers, swipe right after watching this shot. What a finish. Buttruff has to strike for the tie. Got it way in. And he doesn't. Vi wins the U.S. Open by one pin. First Fred tour title. Man. And number one is a major. And it's been coming for Chris Vi. We talked about his lack of emotion. Very calm, in control. He's trying really hard to maintain himself right now. Jacket first. A green jacket is being pulled out. Jason Overstreet from USBC putting it on. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll Tom Clark, the commissioner of PBA. <laughs> thank you. Hands off the Eagle. Storm Nation, thank you so much. Turbo, couldn't do it without you guys. Shout out to all the family and friends back home watching. Oh. Oh my goodness, that was an amazing title match. So you kept the pressure on Jacob. He, you forced him to get three. Tell us from your point of view on that last throw. Honestly, uh, you know, I kind of expected Jacob to, to get all three. Uh, I know how great he is and how great he's been bowling. Uh, so I was basically just getting mentally ready for a roll off. Um, and I was just fortunate that, that he didn't get them all. Not only are you walking away a PBA Tour Titleist, but you're walking away a major champion. Describe this moment. I, I honestly can't even put it into words. Like, I, uh, honestly, I'm speechless. This is obviously a dream come true. I think everyone wants to win a tournament and everyone wants to win the U.S. Open. And to be able to say that I actually did it, it's incredible. What does it mean, the fact that you are walking away with a coveted green jacket, you're walking away with this trophy, you're walking away with the U.S. Open win? What does that mean? It's something no one can ever take away from me. And I'm extremely proud of what I've done and the work that I've put in to get to this point. Um, and the guys, you know, with Storm here that have been with me for several years now, I mean, there's no way I could have done it without them. So I'm, vi I'm just very, very fortunate. Well, you've made five of the last seven major championship shows, and today you walk away a major championship. Congratulations on winning your first ever PBA Tour title and the U.S. Open. Woo! Wow. Yes!
That's exactly, well, like I said before, it's ex exactly what you want to have happen in a major. You want it to come down to the player having to perform at the highest level in their sport. Storm. His Vi's third shot in the tenth, which meant he could not lose in regulation. And then it put the pressure over on the Buttriff camp. And unfortunately for Jacob, now third man. time it's as a runner-up at the U.S. Open, third time as a runner-up this season on the tour. And guess what? You've got yourself uh, a bowling date through. outside of D.C. Oh, next Lord. week, Mr. Vi, because you have just filled up that fifth spot at the guaranteed rate PBA Super Slam. Troop, Lavoie, TD, Thomas Larson, Chris Vi, all in action next Sunday, 12.30 Eastern, live on Fox from Bolero and Annandale. Virginia. Coming up next year on FS1, NASCAR Cup Series racing from Martinsville resumes. We pick it up after 42 of 500 laps. Denny Hamlin, your leader. Chris Vi, your winner at the 2021 U.S. Open Championship. His first tour title, oh, by the way, just happens to come at the U.S. Open from the Cathedral of Bowling, the National Bowling Stadium here in Reno. For Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. Thank you for watching the PBA on FS1.